To gain the additional understanding of how we deal with quantum numbers, orbital quantum numbers, let's now look at the next elements on the periodic table, starting with sodium. We want to find the, the principal quantum number, the angular momentum quantum number, the magnetic quantum number, and the spin quantum number, and also want to indicate the electron configuration in shorthand notation. Now, we already have filled the first two shells, the K shell and the L shell, the first energy level and the second energy level. So any additional electrons that are now placed into orbits around the nucleus, like for sodium, they now have to go into the third energy level. So therefore, the principal quantum number for sodium and magnesium both will be three. Now, what does that mean as far as the angular quantum number? Well, the angular quantum number has now three options. We have L equal to zero, L equal to one, and L equal to two. Remember, L is the angular momentum quantum number. And since in the third energy level, the orbits of the electrons are now equal to three wavelengths of the electron, there's more possibilities in how the electron can go around the nucleus. But for sodium magnesium, they like to be in the innermost energy level of that third level. And that means the angular momentum quantum number will be zero, corresponding to the S subshell. And in the S subshell, there's only room for one orbital called the S orbital. So the magnetic quantum number is also zero for both. And so this would be for the S orbital in the third energy level. And of course, the spin number can either be plus, up, uh, plus or minus one half for the two electrons. And so that's how the next two electrons for sodium and magnesium will be filled. And shorthand notation, we can say, well, we have the first S orbital filled, the second energy S orbital filled, the second energy level, the P orbitals filled, and now we have the, uh, <clears throat> the third energy level, the S orbital, <clears throat> with one electron in it, and then here we have three S2 electrons in it. Now what we can do sometimes is we can say this whole thing right here is the same as it is for neon. So sometimes we can write the shorthand notation like this, meaning neon means 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6. The first 10 electrons are filled like that, added then to the new electrons in the third energy level. Okay, now next we have the aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon in our periodic table. Let me move over here real quick so you can see that. That is, of course, still in the third energy level. So we can put in three for the principal quantum number right here. And of course, the third level, that's the KL, the M shell. So this belongs to the M shell. This also belongs to the M shell. And since, of course, the S orbital is now filled, we can only have P orbitals next for the electrons to be placed in there. So now we call the angular quantum uh, number one and one corresponds to the P subshell. And in the P subshell, we have three P orbitals, each containing up to two electrons. So we can say this is uh, plus one, this is zero, this is minus one for the, this is the first P orbital in the third energy level, orbital. This is the second orbital, uh, P orbital, and I should use a small p, so P orbital in the third energy level, and this is the third p orbital in the third energy level. And then of course, in each p orbital we can have two electrons, so it will be plus one half, minus one half spin direction. Notice in each orbital the electrons have opposite spin directions, so they can exist in the same orbital. And on shorthand notation, we can have the 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 as neon, so this would be neon neon, and neon, and then we can add then, this would then be a 3s2 and 3p1, 3s2 and 3p2, and you can see how you continue filling the p orbitals, so we have 3s2, 3p3, 3s2, 3p4, 3s2, 3p5, and 3s2, 3p6. So as we one by one start filling the p orbitals. Now typically speaking, because this can be slightly misunderstood, the way the p orbitals are actually filled is that the first electron is placed in the first p orbital, the second electron actually goes in the second p orbital, the third electron actually goes in the third p orbital before we start putting a second electron in each of the three p orbitals because electrons have less of a uh, 
a lower energy state when that is done in that way. So keep in mind, as the electrons are being filled, the first electron for aluminum will go in the first p orbital, for silicon, second p orbital, for phosphorus, third p orbital, and then they start doubling up on these next three right here. Okay, what happens next? Now, next is an interesting situation here because the next orbitals to be filled in the third level, the M shell, would be the D orbitals. But for some reason, when we get to the next two uh, elements on the periodic table, potassium and calcium, the electrons do not go into the D orbitals of the third level. They actually go into the S orbitals of the fourth level. So the quantum number for calcium and potassium here, or potassium calcium in that order, is actually four, because the electrons will go into the fourth energy level, so KLM N, that would be the N shell, because it's a lower energy state in this particular case. And so that means that they will then go into the S subshell, so the L or the angular momentum quantum number is zero for the S subshell. And of course, in the S subshell, there's only one orbital, one of the S orbitals. So we have zero and zero for the S orbital. And so this becomes neon plus 3s2, 3p6, and 4s1 and 4s2. I didn't leave enough room for the second one. So here that would be neon, and that would be n with a small e times 3s2, 3p6, and 4s2. So the s orbital in the fourth energy level gets filled before the d orbitals in the third energy level get filled. Hmm. So keep that in mind. So now for the next uh, elements, scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, and cobalt. Now what happens is now the electrons begin to fill the d orbitals, so now they go and fill up the third energy level. And uh, so now this becomes the, uh, again, we're filling the M shell. And so now we begin to fill the D orbitals. That means we have the 2 for the angular momentum quantum number. And so this now becomes the D subshell. And of course, we have, this becomes a minus or plus 2, I should say, plus 2, plus 2 for the D orbitals. And actually, let's do it right now. Let's show you how that fills up. So what happens is electrons begin to fill the d orbitals. They start with the first d orbital, then they go to the next d orbital, then they go to the next d orbital, then they go to the next d orbital. And now something very interesting happens. And so let's see here. Scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium. Let's border that off here. All these fill the M shell. And they, we fill the D subshell, and you can see the D orbitals. We start putting electrons in there, but when we, st we start putting, when we start filling the D orbitals and we fill in four electrons in the first four D orbitals, what's going to happen is one of the electrons from the S orbital is going to be snatched away and placed into the D orbitals, so this becomes minus two. So, in other words, having five electrons situated in the 5D orbitals and only one in the S orbital of the fourth energy level is more uh, stable, so to speak, for the electrons. It's a, it's a lower energy configuration for electrons. So instead of keeping this one filled and filling these one by one, by the time we get to the fourth one, all of a sudden what happens is the electron in the s orbital of the fourth energy level will come in, fill up the fifth orbital in the d orbitals. So what we'll have at that point is with chromium, you'll have a situation where you have one electron in the s orbitals, five electrons in the d orbitals. And then for the next element, manganese, instead of then continuing with the d orbitals and placing a second electron into one of the five d orbitals, it then fills up the s orbital again, and then you'll have two complete electrons in the s orbital of the fourth level. So if we're going to write that down for chromium, so let me fill this out. So we have neon times 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and then it starts filling the 3d1. And then the next element, it'll be neon times 3s2, 3p6, 4s2 and 3d2. Of course, that would be for titanium. And for vanadium, we have 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and 3d3. 
Now we take the next element, which is chromium. So this, uh, let me put the elements here. So this would be scandium, titanium, vanadium, and chromium. We have neon times 3s2, 3p6, 4s1, because one electron is yanked out of the s orbital, and to fill the d orbitals, and that becomes 3d5. And then the next element that comes in, which is manganese, it then completes the, P or the s orbital in the fourth energy level, so this is 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d5. And then what happens is, when the electrons then fill in the second position of d orbitals, when we get to 3d9, then all of a sudden again, one electron will be yanked out of the s orbitals to fill up the 3d orbitals, so you have 10 electrons in d orbitals, and then the very next electron then will complete the s orbital again, and then the electrons will then continue to fill the next orbitals like that. So hopefully that gives you some slight introduction to how you deal with the quantum numbers, dealing with the electrons being placed in the orbits around the nuclei of all the various elements on the periodic table. At least it gives you some insight into the initial uh, electron configurations of the first uh, 20 or so um, elements on the periodic table. Okay.